Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of the Fool on the Hill Daily Devotional. This is Pastor Chris. Thanks for joining me today. Um, we're talking about Christian unity this past Sunday. We had a service of Christian unity and it was a wonderful experience. And to a certain extent, we believe that we started to answer a prayer that's 2,000 years old. The prayer of Jesus in John chapter 17 is that we would be one so that, and by we I mean all the people who follow Christ as Savior and Lord, that we would be one so that the world will know that he was sent by the Father to do what? To seek and save the lost. So this is, these are just some of the things we've been talking about, and it's been real interesting. I think interesting for me anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. In the book of Acts, we see this practically playing out. This is the Acts of the Apostles, but it's really the Acts of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit is uniting and creating a people group that didn't exist before this group called the Christians, this group called the Body of Christ or the Bride of Christ. It's going got a lot of different names, but it is this collective uh, group that has become a people group that cuts across every geographical and language and cultural barrier and unites a people, one people, who all rally around the same truth, that Jesus is Lord and that everyone needs to put their trust in him and that because of the love that he has given to us, we now want so desperately to pass that love on to others and to share the love of Jesus with everyone who's willing to listen. Now in the book of Acts, uh, we see, as I said, this practically playing out. Uh, backing up for just a second, look throughout the Gospels and you'll see that the disciples were not necessarily in unity all the time. Jesus was the one that kept them in unity. If it weren't for the fact that Jesus was right there physically, those guys would have gotten into fistfights lots of times. In fact, they were jockeying for position. Even James and John had their mom come to Jesus and say, you know, could you do me a favor? Look, here's the deal. You need a left-hand guy and you need a right-hand guy. Consider my sons. You couldn't go wrong. You know, I mean, th this is what she was doing. And uh, she wasn't the only one. Others were kind of jockeying position. There was this sense that Jesus was going to bring a kingdom. He was going to crush the Romans, that they were going to move on into some kind of millennial kingdom that they saw prophesied, uh, that they vaguely understood in the book of Isaiah. And so they were thinking, you know what? This is the Messiah. He's going to crush all of our enemies. And we're right this close to him. So maybe we want to be a little closer. Which one of us is going to be the right-hand guy? Which one of us is going to be the Joseph who is second only to Pharaoh? Which is the, who's going to be the Daniel in this kingdom? They wanted position. And because they had those kind of ambitions, it actually divided them. And Jesus had to constantly call them back to say, you know what, this isn't how my kingdom is set up. It's not how it's operating. You need to be thinking about how you can serve your brother and your sister, not about how you can get them to serve you. It's a topsy-turvy kingdom, as someone said. It's opposite of what we expect. Instead of climbing to the top, that's, that's what we see in the corporate world a lot of times. That's what we see in the business world. That's what we see... Uh, amongst uh, those who are professionals in other areas in the sports world. It doesn't matter what it is. People want to be the best. And so they've got to climb over the top of others sometimes in order to get to the top. This is the goal that ambitious people have. Can't fault them for that, for am being ambitious. But Jesus is saying, I want you to be ambitious in a different way. I want you to see if you can outdo each other by serving one another. Try to become like one of these little children here. Have a simplicity to your heart and your attitude in terms of how it is that you relate to one another and how you love one another and how much you believe me. These are the things that Jesus values and these are the things that he consistently and constantly and to this day is asking his followers to, um, to be a part of. And we see, in, again, now that's what was going on in the, those three and a half years of Jesus' ministry. But once we get into the book of Acts, they're still trying to figure out who's going to be in charge. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus appears to them a number of times and says, Okay, here's the deal. Guys, just wait in Jerusalem and something's going to happen. You're going to be filled with power. It's going to come from on high. And after that, you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He tells them what to do. So they finally listen. They all are in one accord. Chapter 2 of the book of Acts says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
And then it goes on from there and says there were all kinds of people there, and at least 3,000 people who gathered together there in Solomon's portico in that whole area of the temple. They all gathered together to try to figure out what's going on here, what's this noise all about, and what took place. Peter stands up, preaches a sermon, and 3,000 people get saved. They come to know Christ as Savior. And it all happened when Jesus' followers weren't thinking about who was in charge, but started saying, you're in charge, God, and we're waiting for your instructions. And when they were in one place, in one accord, God poured out his Spirit and got more done in five and five to ten minutes than all kinds of ambitious people who are jockeying for, for, for position ever could have gotten uh, accomplished. So what's the lesson for today? <clears throat> Let's do what God says to do. Let's be in unity. Could it be that our church, if we manifest love, when we think we're just kind of all by ourselves and nobody's watching, could it be that something spiritual is taking place? When we choose to try to serve one another, rather than thinking of ourselves all the time, we start to say, how is it that I can serve when I go into the church? How is it that I can serve throughout the week, Monday through Saturday, even when I'm not at the church? How is it that I can be the church wherever I am? Could it be that if we start to do that, that the world really will see us and they'll really see Jesus in us and this will actually cause people to come to know Christ in a way that's almost effortless for us? When we try to put our efforts not into making a name for ourselves, but instead we put our efforts into trying to lift up Jesus, what could happen? Maybe the same results that they had back then will also happen for us. That's my daily devotional thought. God bless you, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow on Saturday's edition.